Okay, this video is going to be pretty weird. Like, high key, this is not really an easy topic to get through, because it comes from a few different sources. We're going over onto Boston Hockey now, for one, on an article published by Jimmy Murphy, and we're also going over onto Calgary Hockey now, because there was sort of a response piece, I guess. A response to the Boston Hockey Now piece, published by Steve McFarlane earlier this week. So... The main topic that we're going over in today's video is Noah Hannafin of the Calgary Flames. He's a guy that is a pretty notable name if you go out there and you ask Flames fans who is a notable player on your decor. Considering the fact that Hannafin, as a 25-year-old, 6'3", 216 left-handed defenseman, was a former top five pick. He was taken fifth overall in the 2015 draft in the same selection of guys as Connor McDavid, Jack Eichel, Mitch Marner, and... The best of all, Dylan Strome. He was taken fifth overall after all of these guys. He was the first defenseman taken off the board. And I remember very vividly back in that time span, a lot of people were saying, yeah, this guy could become a 25 plus minutes a night two-way defenseman that could get upwards of 40, 50 points because he's so good at just doing it all. You know, he's a big body, so he can play defense. He can get production as well. And he made the NHL right away. I mean, 22 points in 79 games played is definitely not bad as an 18-year-old, but Noah Hannafin with the Hurricanes was never really that guy. He was never the number one player that they wanted him to be, and in fact, there were a few other defensemen coming and going that really did take over the Carolina Blue Line in ways that a lot of people thought Noah Hannafin would have been able to do instead. You had guys like Justin Falk, for example, coming in here and being pretty good. Jacob Slavin started to go out there and really put his name on the map. Not to mention the fact that later on you had yourselves guys like Tony D'Angelo, who was pretty good statistically. You could debate whether or not he was a good addition to the team in general, though. Dougie Hamilton was there, and now you have Brent Burns, of all people. So a lot of good defensemen have suited up for the Hurricanes over the years. But in 2018, Noah Hannafin's path on that team was no longer, as he had gotten traded over to the Calgary Flames in a pretty big trade that also involved a name that you might recognize. Yeah, Adam Fox got sent around in that trade, too, because, yeah, the guy really didn't want to sign in Calgary. Either way, though, you had yourselves Noah Hannafin suiting up on a Calgary blue line that was looking to get a lot better as the years went on. He started out with 33 points in 80 games, declined a little bit in the next few years, but absolutely exploded on a decor that boasted the likes of so many good and capable names, getting 48 points in 81 games played in 21-22. Noah Hannafin was an absolute monster. Not only was he going out there and producing points, like Rasmus Anderson was, like Oliver Shillington was, but... He was also playing some pretty good defense. Chris Tanev was a defensive defenseman monster on the Calgary Flames. He's still there today. And when it comes to Noah Hannafin and his entire body of work, the guy's making $4.95 million a year until 23-24, and you could see that as a very valuable number for a guy that brings the amount of talent that he does. Which is why, when we go over to this first piece published on Boston Hockey Now by Jimmy Murphy, if Strawman doesn't work out with the Bruins, Sweeney should call the Flames. And we take a look at what exactly it is Murphy is writing about when it comes to the Bruins potentially targeting somebody on the Calgary Blue Line. Lo and behold, Noah Hannafin is the name that is mentioned. Now, Noah Hannafin's name and Boston have been kind of linked a lot over the past seven years, because, and you could probably guess this, Noah Hannafin has a hometown connection to the Boston Bruins, making it very easy for people to say, oh, the Bruins need a D-man? Just get Hannafin. This is what Murphy's piece says on the article. Of course, Norwood native and former Boston College defenseman Noah Hannafin will catch the attention of Bruins fans, and the Bruins have been linked to Hannafin in NHL trade rumors on more than one occasion. Years ago, my partner and scribe here at Boston Hockey Now, Joe Haggerty, while working for CSNNE.com, confirmed that Sweeney was trying feverishly, that's a good word, feverishly, to acquire Hannafin on the NHL trade market leading into the now infamous 2015 draft. Per Hag's report, Sweeney was trying to move up to third overall to draft Hannafin and was willing to part with two of the three consecutive picks to do so. Wow, that's a really good video topic, actually. I might have to write that down in the back burner. But unfortunately, this time around, it appears that an NHL source has told Boston Hockey Now that Hannafin's name has not been in NHL trade chatter lately. 
Despite that, though, earlier in the summer, it was confirmed here that the Bruins were entertaining trade talks regarding Bruins winger Craig Smith, who was entering the final season of his contract at 3.1 AAV. Could Smith be used as NHL trade bait for Hannafin or another defenseman that the Bruins have showed interest in before? So the Boston Hockey Now article says, hey, Craig Smith is a guy that the Bruins are trying to get rid of. Do you think there could be some sort of a trade between the Flames and the Bruins where Hannafin gets swapped around for Smith? Now, to me, Craig Smith, he's 33 years old. He's got one more season left at 3.1. Sure, he had 36 points in 74 games last year. But this kind of guy is not the same caliber of good on a hockey team that Noah Hannafin is. I mean, Hannafin already outproduced Smith in last year's worth of play, and Hannafin was a D-man. What more for a guy that would probably go out there and be a middle six-ish caliber player, if not a bottom six caliber player, on the Calgary Flames? It's just kind of a weird idea to bring it up and even suggest that this might be the appropriate sort of return. Oh, Hannafin's on the block? Here's Craig Smith. Give us Hannafin. This is why I wanted to bring up another article to talk about in this same video on Calgary Hockey Now. It's published by Steve McFarlane, and it says the same thing that was highlighted in the Boston Hockey Now piece that Hannafin's name is not on the trade market right now. This piece pretty much goes over the same thing. Hannafin is good, he is a reasonable contract, etc., etc. And because of how valuable he is, you're not really going to go out there and trade this guy. There's no advantage to doing so. So, bearing some miraculous deal that makes David Pasternak the Calgary Flames' best right winger since the departure of Jerome Ginla, the Bruins' conversation is a non-starter. At least, when it comes to Hannafin. There are other names that are mentioned here, but I did want to focus on that one last bit right there. Unless the Calgary Flames get themselves David Pasternak, a Hannafin trade is a non-starter. Now, to me, when I think of David Pasternak, this is in a completely different territory of good than Craig Smith is for the Boston Bruins. Pasternak is a lot younger, Pasternak is a lot better, and he's got one season left at a pretty reasonable cap hit for the talent that he has. Sure, there's going to be an entire extension process there because he does need a contract beyond 2023, but this guy could realistically go out there and score maybe 45 to 50 goals next season, and maybe even 100 points. He is that gosh darn good, but he's so good to the point that if the Bruins ended up saying, hey, we want Hannafin, he's on the block. He's not, but let's say hypothetically he is on the block. What can we give up to get Noah Hannafin? It would be an absolute travesty if the guy going over was David Pasternak. Like, don't get me wrong, Hannafin's good, but I feel like for David Pasternak and the caliber of a winger that he is, there are only so few defensemen in the NHL that the Bruins would even think about getting in return. I'm talking about the Adam Foxes, the Kale McCars, the Heiskanens, the Hugheses, the Darlenes. I don't think Hannafin is in that boat, but then again, maybe the Bruins value him more because he's from Boston. Maybe that's the case here, but I don't really know if that's too fair to say. Also, you go over to a Twitter thread that you can find. This is what Connor Green ended up saying about the article published by Steve McFarland. So, the Hannafin analysis. If, and that's a massive if, Pasternak does not sign an extension, no shot in hell he is traded for Hannafin if he's willing to sign. Obviously, it would need to be Hannafin plus plus. To be clear, Steve McFarland replies, I said Hannafin is not on the block at all. But the only way that would change is if it was for a player like David Pasternak, as opposed to Craig Smith and the suggestion that was made by Jimmy Murphy on Boston Hockey Now. And, you know, I could totally get where they're coming from here. Like, Craig Smith, I think, is a complete non-starter conversation if you're talking about a guy like Noah Hannafin coming back in return. But David Pasternak, I feel like, is a little bit too much. I don't know, I guess I wanted to make this video to ask you, the audience, what exactly is the valuation of what Hannafin is worth for the Calgary Flames at this moment? Because it's no secret that he has improved a ton over the past few years, ever since those days in Carolina. He's a much better, more defined, polished defenseman, and he's putting up numbers while also being a very good defensive mind on top of that, so it's pretty much a complete package over here. But is he so good to the point that you would only think about trading this guy away if it's for somebody like David Pasternak? Is that trade of equal value? Or is Hannafin so good in that you would only really trade him away for somebody that is significantly better rather than getting somebody of equal value, quote unquote, because, I mean, Pasternak is so good, you're already so accustomed to having him on your team, what's the point of sending that away? 
Talk to me, comments, your thoughts about Noah Hannafin and what he is worth on the trade market, whether or not the Craig Smith or the David Pasternak analysis is more accurate or not. And if both of those are a little bit too far out to lunch, what do you think would be more valuable from the eyes of the Boston Bruins? Talk to me, comments, your thoughts about Noah Hannafin. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.